Hi there, my name is Morris Engler. I'm from Merging Technologies. I'm a project manager at Merging. I'm a training expert and I'm a user also of Merging products. I will show you some features about Ovation 6 and specific, specifically uh, features concerning the Audio 3D, Audio Immersive with Ovation 6, uh, that it's new and available since early 2016. And before that, I just want to talk about two few, few little things, what we have in front of us. First of all, we have a Happy here, which is our audio converter at Merging. Uh, converts analog to digital, digital to analog, digital to digital, and specifically goes over IP, over Ravenna AS67, into our ovation, into the computer that holds the ovation, that hosts the ovation. And of course, as it is IP, so you can connect it to other devices as well that are AS67 or Ravenna compatible. Um, in my ovation 6, first of all, uh, I'm going to specifically talk about some features about the Audio 3D, as I said. If you want to have a more general idea about what Ovation is or what it can do, uh, I would recommend that you watch some other videos that are talking about this. So, specifically, Ovation 6 has a complete new bus structure. We're going to look at... Uh, a few things. The first is that here our bus structure, if I want to add a new bus for example, tells me that I have now general mixing bus and panning control bus. The general mixing bus is basically each time, so to say, a bus, so it can be a mix bus or a mixed group or an aux bus or an aux group. The difference between bus and group is the fact that bus have physical outputs. In our case it would be going out through the happy or mix group, it means that it has a send and return within the same mixer, creating some subgroups and things like that. And I have a fifth possibility is an object bus, typically for Atmos purposes. Then I have a channel mapping. Our buses can be from mono to stereo, obviously, but can go up to 3-1, 4-1, 5-1, 5-0, 6-1, all the different types of classic configurations I have all the 9.0, 9.1, I have the 13.1 and so on, up to the 20.2 NHK and the maximum is 30.2. So it means that our bus structure can per bus handle 30.2 streams. I can have several bus, I can have several buses of different types if I wish. How to handle this? We're working in two platforms, a native version which is Novation Native, which handles up to a certain amount. But then for bigger projects, bigger installations, we uh, would then recommend the Mascore, which is basically our own engine, which is hosted underneath the Windows system, and which, is, uh, which allows you roughly to take care of 384 IOs, plus 256 buses, and all of that talking directly to one stream of Ravenna. So a tremendous amount of, of capacity where you can manage such an amount of buses and possibilities. This is about this new struct bus, the new bus structure, sorry. Now each bus can be configured. I've opened here a window, a configure window, which basically tells me I'm, I have opened this from this first called MG1, first blue bus. It tells me that I first of all have a room size that I've given before. This room size has a certain size, obviously, and i given here a size in of the square or the cube that I want to put in. So to give you the, the, the concept of it, on the left side I see my cube from the top, and from the, on the right side I see my cube from the, ta from the back. So the, the little green dots here are the ones from the top speaker, so top left, top center, top right, and so on. The, Red ones are the speakers of my height, uh, left, center, right, left, surround, right, surround in this case. And the bottom one, the blue ones, are the ones, the bottom speakers. And so I created the size of this room that I can change. If I want to go to 8 meters, of course it's going to become bigger. And if I go to smaller sizes, I lose 
uh, some of the speakers because I'm going out of my room. So let's go back to the distance or the size that I created before. Of course, I can go virtually. This would be more for a type of uh, a broadcasting application, which is not what we want to talk about now. Now, every from those different types of speakers would have then a position in XYZ, again, that I can then define separately for each of those speakers. For example, if we would think of an immersive audio in a given place uh, where the entrance is at the bottom or around the bottom right speaker, so I could diminish the gain so that it's not too unpleasant if you enter and you really cross at this page. Different. Good. I'm going to close this and I'm going to talk now about my signal. Now I'm going to launch my show to be able to play with a little bit and to show you how everything is functioning. So I will see now that some signal is coming through my mixer. There we go. We have some proper signal. And first of all, I'm going to open a very simple mono strip. My strips as well as my buses are now from mono to 30.2, my strips also can receive some input signal coming from a premix or microphones or whatever from obviously mono to a very high track count. In my case, in this example, I have opened my panner now, which is on every strip. I can have more than one panner if I want, in case I want to add some or apply some different panics to different buses. But in this case, I have one panner. And here again, I find my green dots for the top speakers, my red dots for the mid, I mean, human height speakers, and the bottom, the blue speakers. Uh, same on the left side, view from the top, on the right side, view from the back. And I have this white dot here, which is actually my signal, my mono signal, that I can now pan for the moment through one level. I see on the right side, I'm on one level through my 5.1. Now, of course, I could do the elevation by bringing those up and still I would go from one to the other. I can add some snapshots, some automation snapshot to bring it from whatever to a certain point, from an extreme point to another, crossing those X, Y, Z different uh, 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 possibilities. For that, I would use some mixer snapshots. Now I have divergence. I can make it diverse in 3D. So it means it goes now divergence into the the, 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 the the spatial one, I mean the, the sorry, the one dimension one and the upper the elevation as well. But if I want I can keep it just in 1D or in 2D so that I just use my level one and not the elevation one. This is then I can choose this as I want about about the divergence. Double clicking brings me back to the standard point and I will do it, sorry, I move it just above. I move it back to zero. Now, if I go to a bit more something complex, I open now a bus structure with the panner. So this is a subgroup sending some signals and sending some 18.0 signal into my bus structure and to send it out again. So now, obviously, I have 18 blue white dots. And those 18 white dots, I can move them around. First of all, I can bring them back into a closer source or move them again out. And now I've seen how the signal will influence wherever I send some signal in. The easy thing, I can of course create some divergence or not for all these premix at one go. And I can rotate them in X, in Y, and in Z. Okay, so I can make some very interesting little uh, effects from wherever I want to bring it in and out about this. This can again be automated via snapshots or dynamically if I wish to and goes everything to my mixer for an output then going back, rem sorry, then remaining completely in my mixer or if I wish I can of course bring it back to a desk to send it, to feed it or whatever or to remote control it.